Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org, and I'm back this time with my second design for a simple, inexpensive, but high-quality time-lapse photography slider. Before we get into the details, here's a bit of sample footage from the evening that I tested it out. So the whole thing is pretty simple. It has the usual parts. An aluminum rail with a motor box at one end, and there's an analog dial. You can turn one direction to make it move forward and the other to make it move back, fast or slow. I also splurged and included a power switch this time. The motor pulls the cart along the V-shaped slots of the rail on angle-edged wheels, which are mounted to an aluminum plate and an old tripod ball head. And that is connected to the motor by some rubber timing belt, which loops around a pulley at the opposite end of the rail. There's a parts list on my website, and there's a link to that in the description below. I can't give you a complete tutorial for construction of this thing because I didn't film the construction, but this video, along with some extra details in the full write-up on my website, should give you all you need to know if you want to make your own. The construction can be broken down into three sections. The motor box, the pulley mount at the opposite end, and the camera cart itself. This is all built around an extruded aluminum rail from Open Builds, which is the most expensive part of this thing, and it'll cost you between $14 and $25, depending on how heavy you want it to be. Let me start with the pulley mount. For this, I bought a quarter inch thick aluminum bar, two inches wide and about a foot long. I cut it into three pieces. The exact lengths don't really matter. On the long piece, I measured and drilled some holes for the mounting bolts and centered a hole at the end for the pulley bolt. After I hit it with some rattle can black and it kicked around in the trunk of my car for a while, it looked like this. The pulley is mounted on a bolt with a couple of nuts and washers as spacers to get the height right, and I used a nylon locking nut to attach it to the bar. To attach this plate to the rail, I used some M5 screws and some T-nuts that are made for these V-rails. They slide nicely into the slots on the rail and hold tight when you tighten them down, but when you loosen them up, you can slide the piece around to adjust it. At the far end of the mounting plate, I countersunk two screw holes so that my tripod plate could sit flush there, but it would have been easier to just drill the tripod screw hole an inch to the right. The center hole on that end was tapped with quarter-inch threads to accept a tripod mounting plate, but if you don't want to tap it, you could just buy a couple of cheap Arca Swiss plates and mount them permanently with some screws. Anyway, once the T-nuts are attached to those screws, you can slide the whole lot of them into the V-slots, and then tighten them down, and that's that. If you need to adjust the tension of the belt later, you can loosen the nuts and slide that plate in or out. As long as we're talking about mounting plates, here's the other one, also made with one of the pieces of aluminum bar. I've done the same thing, drilled four holes to mount the plate with T-nuts, and then I tapped a hole in the center for a tripod plate. Then the whole thing slides into the V-grooves, and you can tighten it in place where you want it. And there you have it, the pulley mounting plate in place, and the second tripod mounting plate. The motor box is simply made of an aluminum project box. You can buy these all over the internet in different shapes and sizes, but it's handy to get the type with a split top and bottom for access. For the top of the box, the process is very similar to the pulley mounting plate. You'll drill four holes for the mounting screws and T-nuts, and a bigger hole in the center for the motor post. 
Once you fit the motor into the hole, you can mark the motor mounting holes here and here, and then drill them for the little mounting screws, as you can see here. The motor I'm using is a simple DC motor that is heavily geared down to only three rotations per minute, which gives it a lot of torque without drawing too much power. You can find these on eBay for anywhere from $6 to $12 from China, or you can buy them in the USA for a bit more. In my case, I just pulled the motor and all of the other electronics from my original Dolly project, which you can check out for more information about them in the previous video. I'll also put a wiring diagram on the website in case you need it, though it's really simple. From the motor controller, three wires go to the potentiometer, two wires connect to the motor, and two wires go to the battery pack. And you can add a power switch into either of the battery pack wires. But when all of that is mounted to the project box, you just slide the T-nuts from these mounting screws into the rail and tighten them down. Eventually, you'll stuff all of this stuff into the project box, including the battery pack, and screw the other half back on. Ideally, you'd mount the motor controller to some posts and drill a hole so that you can access the USB port and control the slider digitally. I haven't done that here, obviously. Finally, you'll add the drive gear to the motor and the pointer knob to the potentiometer, and then tighten down their set screws to hold them in place. And finally, that brings us to the camera cart itself. This is nice and simple. In my case, I bought the gantry plate from Open Builds for about $12 because I was impatient, but you could just as easily make one from a sheet of aluminum or steel or whatever else you have handy. You'll take four M5 bolts and slide them through the corner holes. On the other side, you'll place two plain aluminum spacers on one half, and on the other two, you'll place these two eccentric spacers. These have offset holes so that as you twist them, they'll adjust the wheels to be either closer or further from the rail, so you can get them as snug against the rail as you want. Top off those with a couple of washers or other spacers if you need a bit more room between the rail and your cart and then add the four wheels and lock them into place with some nylon locking nuts. I stole this quarter inch screw from an old tripod mounting plate because it has a nice thin head and I threaded that through the center hole to attach the ball head. Now the whole thing can roll right onto the rail and you can adjust the eccentric spacers as you see fit. Finally, I add a couple of long, thin bolts through these holes and attach them with nuts on the opposite side. I use these as posts to attach the rubber timing belt. For the loops on the belt, I simply folded the ends back on themselves, stapled them together, and then wrapped them with some electrical tape. Then you'll insert the belt into the top slots, slide on the cart, wrap the belt around the idler pulley and the drive pulley and adjust the mounting plates so you have good solid tension on the belt. It holds remarkably well, even with quite a bit of camera weight. And that's about it. At this point, you have a reliable, simple to use camera slider that moves anywhere from moderately slowly down to really slowly. It'll take some playing around to get familiar with the speeds and knowing where to set it for a particular sequence, but that's part of the fun of the thing. I am currently working on a more sophisticated version of this though. It will basically be identical, but with a stepper motor instead of a simple DC motor, and controlled with an Arduino and digitally precise speeds. Anyway, if you find this kind of thing interesting and would like to see more of it on my channel, please subscribe and like this video, and of course, leave me any comments and questions down below, or in the comments section of the full article on my website. 
Good luck.